Hey everybody, my name is Asia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some 5 star predictions for the fall of 2020. So sorry if I'm a little bit of a crackhead today in this video. I have been really feeling that energy today. It's not the turkey nerbler. <laughs> Booba's not through turkey nerdler. Hooba newbie. I have been two moods hyper slash crackhead and tired. So I don't know what you're going to get in this video, but we're here. We're here. We're doing the thing, okay? These are all books that I want to try and get to in fall of 2020 that I'm pretty sure are going to be five stars. Obviously, that's why a five star prediction. I hopefully will read these by the end of the year. Um, and then come back in January and wrap them up. Some of these aren't as high up on my TBR as others, but I still think they're going to be five stars. So hopefully they are. And this doesn't mean that I don't think there are other books that could possibly be five stars. I just think that those books could be four or five stars. I also didn't really want to include sequels on this, but I will quickly mention some sequels at the end that I think will be five stars, just as little bonuses. So the first book that I think could be a five star read is The Beautiful by Renee Audier. When this first came out I was hearing kind of some mixed reviews I know some people said this didn't have enough vampires in it for them while other ones really loved it I think that I really love this for some reason it does take place in New Orleans I've been there and I love it so much and I think this kind of might have like secret societies or something in it I'm not sure <laughs> but I think that this will be a five star this also does take place in like a historic time period which I love I really love paranormal books that are set in the past I think that they are some of the best paranormal books since I'm going with the expectation that there's not as many vampires in this one and the vampires kind of show up in the second book I think that this one could be a favorite the next book that I have is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas this recently just came out and I've heard nothing but amazing things about this so far and this is one of my most highly anticipated books of the year I'm actually going to be reading this in October for the perfectly queer book club I'm going to be their guest host and we're going to be reading this book and I'm super excited to be reading this so this book follows a trans boy who who's in a Latinx culture that does actually have magic in it and so he wants to prove that he can be a brujo because they're brujos which are the boys and brujas which are the girls and they perform two different types of magic so he wants to prove that he's actually a brujo to his family because they aren't really accepting of his gender so he's trying to summon this ghost but he accidentally summons the wrong one and it's actually the bad boy of his school who w died so they kind of make this deal where the uh, bad boy who is a ghost um, he wants to tie things up because obviously he died very abruptly so he makes this deal that he will um, just stay around for a bit and pick up the loose ends of his life and the main character has no choice but to agree but the longer that the bad boy's ghost stays around the longer that he doesn't want him to go so there is romance in here and paranormal and magic and i've heard nothing but amazing things and i think this will definitely be a five star and uh, i'm just so excited to read this the next book that i have is the year of the witching and this is also one of my most anticipated books i remember buying this on release day and i'm so mad i still have not read this um it's just because of tbrs and different book clubs and things getting in the way so i will definitely be trying to read this hope Hopefully in October but this book I'm just so excited and a lot of my friends have read this and said pretty good things and they all think that I'm going to love this book all I know is this has to do with witches and magic and um, kind of I believe this kind of takes place around like the Salem witch trials time and so there's kind of like a religious tie-in as well and the main character is black and I just think that this is going to be amazing because I've been wanting to really read a book that takes place kind of like during a witch trials time and I think that this will really like uh, quench that thirst that I'm having for it and I'm just super excited to get into this and I follow the author on Twitter and she's amazing at interacting and this is her debut and I'm just really excited to support her. So as you guys probably know I love thrillers and I'm really trying to get more into them and this is one that I think that I will absolutely adore and that is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This recently also just came out. I've been buying new releases like it's nothing because there were so many that came out September, specifically September 1st and this is one that I've heard nothing but praise for. A lot of people got an early art copy of this and I've heard a amazing things and I heard that this thriller is actually quite scary which I'm really excited for because I love scary spooky everything hopefully I'll also read this in October for those scary spooky vibes 
Alyssa Cole is also a romance writer. I've never read her romance books, but I've heard nothing but amazing things about them. So I think that Alyssa Cole is just a prolific writer in general. And this book has to do with gentrification and that in a thriller sense. And I think that that is just a really interesting concept. And I think that this is just a thriller that could be really important because I feel like there's not as many thrillers that tackle really important issues today, specifically on race. I feel like there's more of like rape culture and things like that in thrillers than anything and still that's like a very small minority of actual thriller and horror books so i think that this one could definitely bring something new to the table i just think that this is going to be unlike anything that i've ever read and i'm just so excited and i trust Alyssa cole even though i haven't read any of her books before so this one i'm really trusting my friend nicole on she has recommended this book to me over and over and over again and it's one of her favorites i think this one could definitely be a five star and that is slave to sensation by nalini singh this is the first book in a romance period paranormal shifter series so we follow shifters um werewolves basically um but shifters is kind of like in a more overarching term for like thing like people that shift into something so not just werewolves but like they could shift into gargoyles dragons anything like that but i believe this book specifically is werewolves and nicole loves this book so much when i tell you anytime i ask for a paranormal recommendation this is what she gives me this and dark lover by jr ward this and dark lover i think could both be five stars that one has to deal with vampires i don't really know too much about either of these besides the fact that they are paranormal and like what kind of paranormal creature they have in it and that nicole loves them both you know i throw yeah. you a ball and you go oh yeah motherfucker and then uh, pop. Is there anything else I need to tell you? I'm super excited for both of them because I really just want to get into more paranormal romance. Um, I've always loved paranormal in general. Like, the, I was obsessed with the Vampire Diaries. When I tell you I went to the town, Mystic Falls, and I saw, like like the the different places that they filmed i did that okay i did that and i saw them filming i saw them filming like i i was that girl okay but i'm just really excited to get more into paranormal romances in general because i think that i'm more of like a dark contemporary or paranormal romance girl because i read a lot of light fluffy contemporary romances that are really popular like let me look at my shelf like the romance book club the hating game red white and royal blue the brown sisters uh just things like that and i do like those books a lot actually most of the ones that i mentioned i gave five stars um because i do own them and i own most of the ones that are my favorites but i read a lot of other ones that are popular as well and it's just really hard for me to give those kinds of romances five stars because i feel like there's not as much substance to them but i feel like paranormal ones and dark contemporaries kind of have a higher stakes and i think that they could really push me to give those five stars out more frequently this one and dark lover would definitely be two that i would guess could be five stars so the next book that i have i'm so excited for and that is bear town by frederick bachman i've heard so many things about this for years for years and i've always had an interest in it but i've never picked it up i never even bought it until recently and now that i own it it's kind of the one of those things where i want to read it because you know like if you're like hmm, what do i want to read like what do i want to put on my tbr like you never really think of books as much if you don't own them or if you aren't reading them from book clubs that was kind of me with this book like i just never thought about it because i didn't own it and i never um since it is a little bit older it would never was like um brought up in book clubs as frequently so i just never read it but i think that this one is definitely going to be five stars like no doubt in my mind this book takes place in a small hockey town and a girl gets traumatized and i believe that this has trigger warnings for rape and that she's actually raped by one of the hockey boys i'm pretty sure um i don't know if that's a spoiler but i do want to put that out there for anybody who has triggers because that's what i know about this and i just really think that this could be amazing not just seeing the effects that um something like this has on just the victim but seeing the repercussions all play out in a single town that's so close-knit i think could be really amazing and i think that this is going to be a tearjerker and i'm going to cry and it's going to make me extremely sad but i like when books make me feel strong emotions i just think this book is going to be one of my favorites and it deals with such important topics i don't think that there's any way i couldn't love this so moving on to the next book i have jade city by fonda lee i'm so excited for this book i've heard really good things about this um a couple months ago i, sh I shifted more away from fantasy booktube but i do have a lot of friends that are still in that kind of area and um i believe like three of my friends in the brains and books girls i always have them linked down below they read this book and 
um, one other person in that group has also read it, but three of them read this at the same time, or was it four? I think it was four of them read this at the same time and they all loved it and I think they all gave it five stars. So I have high expectations that I'm going to give this five stars too. Um, I believe this kind of has like rivaling families because um, Nicole from Nicole and Her Books, she did a video where she read books that had to do with mafia families and she read this in it. So I think this kind of has to do with that, which we love to see. We love to see a good mafia influence. Um, I don't think it's exactly mafia because this is in a like asian culture inspired world and i'm just really excited to be in on the hype because i feel left out okay i don't like feeling left out. so the last non-sequel that i have is ninth house by lee bardugo everybody that i know that's read this has loved this same with like most of these books but some of them i've only heard one or two people talk about them but this one a lot of people read i know some people didn't really like this book but all of my personal friends really really enjoyed this book and I love really dark twisted things as you guys probably could realize by now. Um, I really just like dark things and this does have like secret society cult kind of activity on a college campus and I love those dark academia vibes but I think that this one could be one that I really really love. I know this also has magic in it I'm pretty sure which I didn't know at first but I think that it will make it a lot better and I've read Leigh Bardugo before and I do really like her work. It's not my favorite she's not my favorite fantasy writer um that goes to miss sarah j mass but there is a reason why everybody loves six of crows so much and i think that this is such a different genre for her i think that i could really really love this so i have three sequels to talk about really quickly and the first one is good girl bad blood by holly jackson i read a good girl's guide to murder back in june and it quickly became one of my favorite books of the year it is a ya thriller mystery it has true crime vibes and mixed media elements and it was just amazing fast paced I read it so quickly devoured it I loved the main character which in thrillers I, I don't really feel an attachment to the main character too frequently because I feel like it, the story is not really necessarily about them um and it, I feel kind of detached from them but I loved her and related to her so much and I just think it is amazing and I highly recommend it to everybody and this is the sequel to it so I'm super excited and I've heard this one is even better so I think that this one could just blow me out the water and I'm just excited to see the main character Pip take on another adventure and another mystery. Why am I living for this lighting right now? She's like golden. We love her. So the next book that I have is Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahern. This is the second book to Serpent and Dove and you guys probably have heard about it. There's this book is very mixed, okay? Some people love it, some people hate it. I personally love uh, Serpent and Dove a lot, and I've heard pretty good things about the sequel so far, and I'm just really excited to see how everything plays out in this book because at the end, there were some cliffhangers of Serpent and Dove that I was not okay with, all right? She, I, I was not okay with it because she dropped him and then she left. That's what Shelby Mahern did. She, Shelby said, here you go, there's a bomb, I'm gonna dip real quick, and I said, and I just felt very disrespected. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> the level of disrespect. So I'm just excited to see how all those things play out in this book. The cover, do I just have a thing for like snakes on covers? Because like we love her. We love both them. So this last book that I want to mention I don't physically own and that is A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I literally just finished the first book last night and I adored it. Everybody that I know has given this book five stars and I really thought that I was going to like it. But Monet from Life is Monet gave this book two stars. <laughs> And we discussed it last night and the reason that she didn't like it is because she found hawk the main male love interest very toxic and manipulative but you know what i love him i love his toxic manipulative self i want i want him i am going to create an environment that is so toxic like can he come be toxic to me you know like that's what i want in my life i don't care but i I'm so excited for this book because there were so many plot twists at the end. The whole like last 40% of that book is just plot twist after plot twist after plot twist and a lot of action. And I've had two friends that I know that have read the second book and they said that the second book blows the first one out the water. And the first book was a five star for me. So I'm so excited. They said the plot thickens. The romance is there. They said it's steamy. We love to see it. And Jennifer cannot do me wrong. Jennifer always does me right. I love her. Jennifer is iconic and that's all i have to say so those are all my five star predictions this is kind of also like um a partial 
fall TBR for the next like three or so months until the end of the year. So hopefully I'll come back in January after I finish all of these and be able to conclusively say whether I can trust myself or not and if my five star predictions are actually correct and if I know my own taste well enough. I think I do. I would love to hear your guys' five star predictions down below and if you guys are anticipating any of these books, if you guys have read any of these books and have opinions on them, whether you love them or hated them and think I'm gonna hate them too, let me know down below and I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! You always posting up pictures, trying to look like you winning. I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen, soaking in moments we live in, yeah. You got the nerve to be on me, faking your life for the IG. If you got my number, don't add me, cause baby, I'm